So Purusha and Prakriti, another word of, another way of looking at the existence, the duality of existence, the consciousness and the manifestation. So in this tradition we say that the Shiva or the Shiva um, essence, which is also called the male essence, the Purusha essence is the essence of consciousness, non-moving, non-creating, non-doing, just there as consciousness, no attribute. This consciousness has no attributes. This consciousness cannot create the world as we feel, see, sense, experience. The consciousness is just there as Purusha, as a male being, so to say. So what makes then the world appear the way it is? It is the Shakti, it is the manifestation of consciousness. It is the, the Devi, the Mother, the Shakti, which makes this, this world look, feel like the way it is. Yeah? So these are two ways. The, the male way is of non-doing, the female way is of creating, of manifesting. That's another way of looking at this, this duality. There are many sadhaks, there are many seekers who follow the path of consciousness alone. If you talk to them, they would say, everything is that consciousness. It feels a bit dry because there's no color, there's no dance, there's no ecstasy in that. Yeah. But then there are those who are the worshipper of the Shakti, of the Divine Mother. There is dance, there is play, there is rang, there is color in that. Yeah. These are the beings who are not rejecting the world, who are embracing the world as it is, not rejecting it. Yeah. Purna, I, I call that as a Purna Sadhana. Purna means complete total sadhana where you embrace the world of form also and then you also witness the world of formless at the same time but you don't reject the one for the other yeah foundation now the question here is many times you feel that we want to touch that formless dimension that unknown dimension in our sadhana in our meditativeness yeah. But the question is, can you touch that formless dimension without touching the form, without living or feeling the sacredness of the form, can you enter into the formless domain? That's the question. I'll prove that. Have you seen a Shiva temple, friends? I'm sure we all have seen a Shiva temple. If not, in our physical personal experience in the photographs. Some of our Western friends might have seen this just in the photograph. But a Shiva temple, the, the, the iconography, the depiction of the Shiva temple, the manifestation of that is very beautiful. So you see the Shiva Linga in the center, yeah, as a, as a standing Linga, which is covered by the, the yoni, the female organ. So there's a female organ and then there's a linga in between. You can't go to the linga, so it's like the, the yoni is covering the linga, she's the outer form. In fact, many Shiva temples, even to enter into the temple, you first have to go to the Devi temple and then you are allowed to go into the Shiva temple. Traditionally, that's how it is. You cannot approach a Shiva temple directly or even if you have to go to the Shiva temple there is a circuitry around that circuitry is the Devi the Yoni you have to go to that first before you are able to enter into the the, the center yeah that's a depiction but the point is the same you cannot touch the dimension of consciousness the unmanifest without living the sacredness of the manifest and I'm using the word sacredness of the manifest a friend has asked a question this morning and I said I'll talk about that in today's satsang he asked that why I'm so attached to the world of form to the manifestation to the material world 
so much that I feel it hampers my spiritual journey? I thought that's a very important question. And I thought it's very relevant today in this talk to talk about it. Let me repeat the question. The friend asked, I hope that friend, this friend is on the, on the call today. He asked that, why I am so attached to the world of form, to the manifestation, to the material, inverted commas. And I am not able to pursue my spiritual, inverted commas, sadhana or pursuit. Whatever I have spoken so far, do you get a glimpse of the answer here? Do you get the glimpse of this answer? Let me explain. What did I say just now? I said to touch the conscious dimension, to the dimension of the unmanifest, you have to go through the dimension of manifest. You have to go through the dimension of form. That's the first thing I said. The second thing I said within that is you have to experience and live the world of form, the manifestation as sacred manifestation. So what you are calling as material pursuit, if there is no sacredness attached to that, then you are missing the Devi, then you are missing the Shakti, then you are missing the Mother. Without her, there is no spiritual journey which is possible because look at it from a different perspective. Who we are right now in our experience, who we are, are we consciousness in our experience, huh? not, not uh, gathered knowledge, in our absolute experience, who we are right now, are we consciousness alone in our experience, no, we are not consciousness alone in our experience right now, we are form in our experience right now, I am this body too, yeah. I am my senses too. Yeah. I am this construct I say I am. I am that construct. We can call it the ego construct. It's all right. Ego is not that bad a world. So I am that ego also. That's how I experience the world right now. Yeah. I am my thoughts and my emotions also. I feel deep affinity, deep emotion for the mother. I am that emotion too and yes I am consciousness too but I am all of this which you can call gross which you can call material I am this material too yeah now look at the way mind works it says that whatever you identify with as gross or as material is tuch, is bad is low what are we saying? We are saying this beautiful sacred manifestation of the Divine Mother, we are saying we are rejecting it. We are saying no, no, we are not interested in that. We are only interested in the unknown, higher, unexplainable consciousness alone. We are rejecting the Mother. We are rejecting that Mother which even Shiva did not reject, mind you. We are rejecting that world of form and matter which even Shiva did not reject. In fact, he came to that world of form and matter in the city of Kashi. Are we bigger than that? Are we even bigger than that? That we are rejecting all the matter, all the form, all the sacredness of the manifestation? No, don't do that. The issue, the problem is the matter itself is not a problem. The material world, the material objects, even the objects of desire are not a problem. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> you heard me right. The world of matter, the objects of your desire are not bad. But the problem is, if you take the sacredness out of it, that's where the problem begins. You follow? If any object, if I take the sacredness out of that object, 
if I forget that that object too is a manifestation of the mother because she is the Janani, she is the mother of all that you see, experience, feel, touch. She is the womb of all of that, my friend. How can you reject it? Are you following me? So the only issue is, we have taken the motherly element out of the matter. We have reduced the matter to utility alone. That's the problem. The Hindi word for this is the word called Bhoga. I am sure we have heard this word huh? and to western friends Bhog, B-H-O-G-A, Bhoga or Bhog Bhog means indulgence Yeah, I think that's the right word Bhog means indulgence In the Indian tradition especially in the yogic and tantric tradition we use these two words which are part of a shloka actually and the word are or, or the or the context is from bhoga to yoga from bhoga to yoga in english i will explain the context is from indulgence to meditativeness yeah or from indulgence to joining because the literal meaning of yoga is to join follow this follow this dialogue my friend you're only looking at the world of matter as all these objects of of pleasure so to say just you've reduced them only for their utility you've used you've looked at you're looking at them only as bhoga only as indulgence you have somehow missed the yoga element out of it you've taken the sacredness out of it look at it this way I have this cup of tea here, warm tea here. Yeah, I can drink this tea and continue to talk to you just as a bhoga. I used it just now, I used this tea just as a bhoga, just as an indulgence, just as an object of desire. No sacredness. Okay, another way of looking at it cup of tea in my hand we are talking I take a pause in that pause I move inward I invoke the Divine Mother I know she is also here in this form of manifestation because nothing can exist without her even the tea which is contained inside Narayani Namastute Namastute Even when I drank this sip of tea I remembered the Narayani I remembered the sacredness which is there in this sip of tea also I remembered that she is the mother of this tea too and I remembered that through this object through this manifestation I can reach to her I have maintained the sacredness of this do you follow? do you follow? like in the last satsang series we talked about food so much we talked about why food is sacred how food is sacred when we are saying food is sacred we are saying she is food too because it's a manifestation can you have any food item plant which can be produced without the feminine aspect you sow the seed on on the ground on the okay let's look at it this way earth i give you a fertile piece of land extremely fertile piece of land where the soil is supremely rich, very fertile. You put a seed there. Seed being the symbol of male, masculine. You put a seed in there. But there is no moisture in the soil. Though it's a very fertile soil, all the nutrients are there, but there is no moisture. There is no water. 
there is no feminine water in that soil can the seed germinate no for the seed to germinate you just don't need the nutritive soil you need moisture water water is a depiction in this example as of feminine you need the feminine on the soil and that feminine will come and nurture the seed and that's how a plant will come and then a flower will come and then flower too has a male and a female and then the female energy will take over and the flower will become the fruit can you have food without the touch of divinity without the blessing of the mother energy the shakti energy the devi energy the feminine energy no you cannot have even the food hence we said food too is sacred it too is a dimension of divinity are you following so it's not that you kill all the matter run away from all the matter don't do that that's not how the world is designed that's not how how the how the world of sadhana is also designed no as i said there's a shloka which says from the bhoga to the yoga when you start to experience every particle of matter each object of your desire in its immensity in its absolute sacredness that's when the magic happens that's when you start to see the the sacred element in this that's when an object has become divine just based on this we created the whole science of temple making no we take a piece of stone a dead stone object a stone is an object utilitarian probably but what do we do with that stone in a temple we attach sacredness to that stone prana pratishtha we bring the life force into that stone the sacredness and then that particular stone becomes divine for us pujniya an uh, a symbol of divinity a symbol of spirituality or symbol of religiousness in the right context so the same object which was just an object suddenly has transformed itself and has became supreme manifestation of the divine the mother exists you you bring the mother into that stone again ramakrishna paramhansa he was appointed as a priest of kali temple what is kali in that temple for others for others what is kali in that temple for others kali was just a statue an image a stone stone image and they would do all the rituals as prescribed to to that image of kali every day but for ramakrishna paramansa she was just not an image she was mother herself a living being sitting there so for ramakrishna his way of of worshiping her touching her uh, feeding her talking to her was as if she's a physical alive person sitting there for her the stone had become so sacred the stone image had become so sacred that for for him in his perception it was no less than the the living divine mother yeah so from from the bhoga to the yoga do not reduce the world of objects and matter just to its utility see the mother see the see the sacredness in each and it will transform your experience